What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 17.0.1 to everybody. This is not a beta, this is a public release for all devices running iOS 17. And this comes on the heels of Apple's big launch of iOS 17 just a few days ago. Now along with this update, Apple also released several other updates. So we also have iOS 17.0.2 for the iPhone 15 series. So when you get that iPhone 15, you will see that new update. We also got iPadOS 17.0.1. WatchOS 10.0.1, macOS Sonoma RC2, and then for older devices, we have iOS and iPadOS 16.7, macOS 13.6, macOS 12.7, and watchOS 9.6.3. So a big day of updates for Apple, which is relatively rare on Thursdays. But anyways, taking a look at the size of the 17.0.1 release, we can see here for a double point update, it actually came in at a pretty large 430 megabytes on my 14 Pro Max. Let's check out the build number. The new build number is 21A340. And going back to the modem firmware, that is 2.08. 0.02. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 17.0.1? And the first thing I wanna to touch on is the fact that the release notes right here, if you got this update, you'll notice that it does say it's for the 15 and 15 Pro models. However, this is released to everybody. So this update is going to include bug fixes for the 15 and 15 Pros, but it's going to contain security updates for everybody else. And that's the big reason that this software update was pushed for all devices, not just iPhones, but also for the Macs, watches, all of that. So if you take a look at the security notes here, you can see it's actually pretty significant. So we have three actively exploited bugs that Apple patched with this update. So it's a pretty important security fix. The first one is a kernel bug, and it says that a local attacker may be able to elevate their privileges, and Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited against versions of iOS before iOS 16.7 and this was addressed with improved checks here in 17.0.1. And then we have a security bug here as well, and this one's pretty interesting. So it says a malicious app may be able to bypass signature validation, and Apple is also aware of this being actively exploited as well. And then the last one is a WebKit bug where the impact was processing web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. And of course, this one was also being actively exploited, and it was addressed with improved checks. Now, all of these were found by the Citizen Lab, as you can see right there under the CVEs. So pretty important anytime we see, you know, bug fixes that are actively exploited or bugs that are actively exploited and Apple patches those, it's usually highly recommended to go ahead and update your device as soon as possible, just so your device is safe. It's not likely any of these things are ever gonna happen to you, but you know, better safe than sorry. And by the way, those same security patches have been applied in iOS 16.7. So if you're on a device that is not supported on iOS 17, or if you're just staying back on iOS 16, you should know that iOS 16.7 patches up the same bugs that were patched in 17.0.1. Now going back into these release notes, we can see that it does say that there are bug fixes for the iPhone 15s, but again, we don't really know any specifics yet. So unfortunately, I do not have the iPhone 15 early. It does come out tomorrow and you know I don't have it early, so I cannot test and see what has been fixed on the iPhone 15s, but I'm aware that this is the second update that's been pushed out for the iPhone 15s on iOS 17, so that's pretty interesting interesting and the build number for the iPhone 15 version iOS 17.0.2 is 21A350 and again if you remember in this update it was the same except for as 340 so you can see right there there's only one digit that's been changed in the build number so it's essentially the same version just with added fixes now as far as the performance and battery life goes on 17.0.1 I would not expect any type of improvement in either department this is simply a bug fix and security fix update so don't expect anything however I did run a Geekbench 6 test just for the heck of it and you can see we scored a 2643 on the single core and a 6708 on the multi-core and if we compare that to iOS 17.0 the single core score is just ever so slightly higher and the multi-core is just very slightly lower so pretty much identical it seems in terms of performance to iOS 17 and then like I mentioned don't expect any changes to the battery life the battery life changes usually come in the single point updates the 17.1 17.2 and so on that's usually when we see the battery life enhancements so I would not expect battery life to get any better 
better. Now, also, I know some people were mentioning that they had an issue when they changed their ringtone. If so, like if you go into text tone, for example, so if you had a custom text tone that you like exported from GarageBand and then you switch to one of the new text tones, your ones that you imported from GarageBand would just disappear and they're pr pretty much nowhere to be found in iOS 17. So it's a really weird bug. And what's strange here is that my ringtones still show up. So you can see I have three custom ringtones right here, but they don't show up as text tones. So they did beforehand, but now for some reason they don't show up right there, uh, but it doesn't change for me for ringtones. They still show up after I switch to one of the new ringtones and then back. All right, so now let's talk about the next release for Apple and when we can expect to see that. So next up, you know, tomorrow we're we're going to see the iPhone 15s launch. So we're probably not going to get any software tomorrow. It's possible to get a very last minute update for the iPhone 15 if something really goes wrong, but I don't think we're going to get any software until next week at the earliest. Now next week, it is possible that we're going to see an iOS 17.1 beta one. So I believe iOS 17.1 is coming most likely at the end of October. So if that were the case, that would mean that we most likely need to start that beta one next week. So I think that maybe right there on Tuesday, the 26th is when we should see iOS 17.1 beta one for registered developers. And if that is the case, that would pretty much reaffirm that we should be seeing a public release of iOS 17.1 at some point in late October, potentially even early November. And that update could include things like the journal application, you know, maybe the text and ringtone bug fix, who knows? Usually that point one update has quite a few fixes and enhancements. So that's really all we're expecting for now. And uh, if you're still on iOS 16, I would not expect any more major updates for iOS 16. 16.7 is most likely the final release. You may just get security updates from here on out. And if you're wondering if you should update to iOS 17.0.1 or not, I say yes, for sure. I mean, we have security updates. Those are always, you know, pretty much a no brainer to go ahead and update for, especially because you're not sacrificing any type of battery life or performance. You're not adding really anything new to the software. You're just fixing up things, flaws that were in the existing software. So yes, I think it's worth updating. And of course, when you get your iPhone 15, if you are getting one, I would go ahead and update to iOS 17.0.2 as soon as possible. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for a lot of iPhone 15 content coming very soon. And of course, more iOS 17 coverage coming your way as well. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.